So budget versus budgeter. Two budget launch monitors, completely different applications, but I thought, you know what, this is going to be a fun experiment to put them head to head. The MLM2 Pro versus the Pi Golf 2. Now the Pi Golf 2 is definitely not meant to be a home golf launch monitor like the MLM2 Pro where you're trying to measure and get exact numbers on data which compared to the top end of home launch monitor systems but the Fee Golf 2 is really something to get the family involved to have a whole lot of fun but it has some extra features that I want to explore. So this is the Pi Golf 2 stick. And what it has is the sensor, and the sensor is basically the launch monitor of this configuration right here. And what you can do is I can actually take this off, and I can go and put this into any golf club. So I've just grabbed another golf club because mine have all the Arcos sensors in it. And once I push this down, I can line it up with the handle and the grip. It's already turned on because I've pressed that button at the top while I was pushing it down. And now I can use my actual golf club, hit an actual golf club, hit an actual golf club. I can use my actual golf club, I can hit an actual golf ball, and I can get numbers from the Pi Golf 2 sensor using this setup, which I think is absolutely awesome. But let's put it up against the MLM2 Pro. I know it's a little bit of a mismatch, but let's have some fun and see what it's all about. And just before I do, Pi Golf has given me a whole bunch of Pi Golf systems to give away because they have a Black Friday Amazon sale coming up. And in celebration of that and the Christmas season, the festive season, We've got a whole bunch of stuff to give away. So if you want to win one of these, then you have to comment Pi Golf 2 in the comment section and subscribe to this channel, like this video, and you're going to go into the draw to win one of these and get to you before Christmas. So happy days. Let's get to it. So what we're going to do, guys, is we are just going to go into training and then training will give us a practice range in the Pi Golf system. And then, of course, we're going to be doing the exact same thing on the MLM2 Pro. I'm going to compare some numbers just with some warm-up shots on a 7-iron. Then I'm going to get into a little bit of shot shaping and just see how close is the Pi Golf 2 to something like an MLM2 Pro. So what I can do is I can just move this as well. It gives you a whole bunch of club selections. I'm going to go into a 7-iron because that's what we're hitting. And it's a little bit ready. There we go. We are now ready to go. I've got the screen recordings on and making sure that's all lined up. All you got to do is just grab your golf club like this, put it down by the ball and address the ball. And then we are going to be ready to swing. Warming up. There's a whole lot of shots on there because that just comes from previous sessions. But what do we have? We have... A carry of 147 versus a total distance of 143. I think the carry might have been a little bit shorter there. Launch angle 19. It's actually giving me an attack angle here, which is pretty cool. Swing tempo on club path. Okay, what other sort of metrics are we getting here? We'll go back. Ball speed 113. It's not really giving me that short distance. Okay, so it's going to give me the total distance. I've had two shots, but we can replay it if I wanted to see exactly what my carry distance was and I thought that would actually give me the number, but it didn't. Okay, so I'm just going to go up a club in the Fee Golf 2 thing and go to 6 iron and see if this actually changes the distance that I'm getting. That was nice. That was struck really well. And yeah, straight away I get more of a distance boost. Um... 152 going out to 156 and we see a shot distance of 156.6 so the totals there between the two are spot on i need to hit another one now to confirm that but that was encouraging and i had a very similar shot shape as well i can actually turn this off so i just see the last shot shape and if we compare those two shot shapes between the mlm2 pro and the pi golf 2 i think that's pretty impressive so let me hit one more Low and straight. Okay. Again, we have very similar shot shape. 160.4 versus 153. Okay, so maybe a little bit bottomy there, which it didn't pick up. Um, this is running everything off the sensor, and I actually hit it a little bit low in the club face. So potentially I need to do one more now. Okay, that was flushed. And 159 in total, 156 in total. Okay, so the carry distances are a little bit short, but in terms of the fact that this is only just the tiny little sensor on a golf club hitting a golf ball and I can get numbers that are even remotely close is actually 
quite extraordinary. But what about shot shaping? Because that matters too. So we need accurate shot shapes. We're seeing here just with my natural swing. I'm getting a very similar shot shape to the MLM2 Pro, but let's try a couple of things. Been hitting some slight draws, which I've been very much welcoming back into my golf game. So let's now try and ruin that and hit a fade. I've double crossed it. Okay, so the Rap Soto has actually given me that fade. The Figo of Two has said that I've double crossed it. So that was where my initial reaction came from is seeing the flight path of say Fee Golf and Pi Golf, it's Pi Golf, okay? Yeah, that was definitely a fade. I'm getting a pretty straight ball flight. We can see the Rap Soto is giving me a fade there. Really nice fade too, mind you. Okay, so potentially the fade shot shape because the way that I tend to do my fades is by changing the club face rather than my swing path a whole lot. So that may be why we're not seeing, although, I mean, it still looks pretty good, doesn't it? It just doesn't have that, that shape. Let's try some trajectories now. This is really putting it to the test going up and down in terms of ball flight. So we've just hit some stock ones. Let's try and hit some just lower ones, a lower draw maybe. Yeah, I mean, I hit that really good, but I think I'm going to continue to get the same trajectory and ball flight from this because the sensor really is just getting me the readings of the swing as opposed to the trajectory. Uh, launch 18.2, so that one was definitely a little bit lower, and we see maybe a touch higher, but not much. But now I'm going to try a stinger, an actual, actual stinger. Yeah, see the trajectory there is definitely higher. Again, I hit that one pretty well. And 157. Man, I should just try and hit stingers all the time. And I've dropped the launch angle there by quite a lot. Um, 149 versus 163. So there's a little bit of a difference there again. And I really am asking quite a lot of this to be able to pick up the trajectories. But, guys... The Pi Golf 2, in terms of a sensor that you can throw on a normal golf club at home, if you're hitting it outdoors into a net, or if you're just wanting to practice swinging, you don't actually have to hit a golf ball. So that's something that I'll show you as well. So we've been hitting golf balls in here, but if I just line this thing up without a golf ball, here, ready to swing. You can see there that it's actually going to hit the ball anyway and give me the exact same thing so that was a pretty good swing maybe I should have pulled a ball down um, and it's going to give me the exact same data as what it would if I actually hit a ball now this is really beneficial to someone who's getting out there just trying to warm their swing up and just see somewhat where their ball's going if you're hitting stock shots I found that the trajectory the ball flight the shot shape was really accurate when I started to try and manipulate it a little bit I think I'm probably asking a little bit too much but how cool of a feature is this in the Pi Golf 2 Make sure you check it out. That's it from me today, guys. I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.